On a happy Thursday, welcome to the show. Today is March 7th. It's my lucky number, you guys, 3737. Lucky number. I've said it before. It's the number that just shows up in so many places in my life. So today is a lucky day. Welcome to the show. We have a huge show, a huge show, because we have to talk about Andy Cohen fighting back against Leah McSweeney's charges thankfully. Real Housewives of Beverly Hills reunion part two. And then of course the Love is Blind finale plus more all on today's Daily Dose of Donna. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the show. I am so happy to see you on this gorgeous Thursday. Sun's out. Gun's out. We're ready to go. We're ready to party. I love the energy. Loving all the new dosers that are jumping on in over on Facebook, here on Instagram. I'm sorry, YouTube, on Instagram, new followers, TikTok, etc. So wherever you're hearing me from or, or learning about me, welcome to the party. Um, I've got people from all around the world, all around the world that join in on this one experience, this one event, this one event. It happens daily, every day, Monday through Friday. I will have to take a couple days off during spring break time. So I'll give you guys some heads up around April because I'm trying to do some traveling with the kids, getting them out of the house so that they're not just sitting on screens all day. If you know, you know. Ah, good times, good times. Okay, guys, we have so much to talk about. We have so much to talk about because um, yesterday was a huge TV day. Obviously, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills reunion part two. And before we get into it, all I can say about it is I want to watch the Beverly Hills women all day long. Like you realize this after you've seen Vanderpump Rules, after you've seen shows like Potomac that are just not as amazing. It's just, it, it's like, you just want to watch it, right? We've got that show, which I found really good. I really liked the second part of the reunion, even though usually the second part is a little boring. I really liked it. And then, um, Love is Blind obviously had a 90 minute finale, which I watched in about 12 minutes because I I have to be 100% honest. I had to fast forward through a lot of it. And I'm sure a lot of you felt the exact same way as me. Um, and then Bet It All on Blonde was on. And if I have time on today's show, I will touch on it. If not, I did uh, talk to Thea D'Souza from Your Moms Are Watching on Instagram. If you follow her, she will be on um, a Patreon episode this week talking about Better It All on Blonde. It was a two-part series for Erica Jane last night. I'm trying to think if anything else was on TV last night. I don't think so. Oh, I've been watching. Okay, so I've been watching Vanderpump Villa. I just started it. Hulu sent me the first three episodes, I think. I'm not exactly sure. And I started the first episode yesterday. And I said it on my Instagram already that I feel like it has the makings of a good, you know, Vanderpump Rules, Soho, Southern Hospitality type of show. Whenever you have people that are in, in a cast that are young, no offense, okay? I, I love an older woman. I love an older man. But like, let's be honest, right? These shows, you want them to be messy, so when they're young and they're kind of either single or just dating or hooking up and no one's like super serious yet, they're just trying to make their way and figure it out, that's usually when you have really good Bravo reality TV. And it's the makings of a good show because essentially there is a villa. I mean, look, from what I'm getting, they rented out a place in the south of France and she, they cast this cast of characters to go over there and be the staff of this villa. And I believe it's in the beginning where Lisa says, I'm still just trying to figure out if this is something that I actually really want to make a full-time thing. Like it's like a pop-up is essentially what it is. And from what I know, it seems like 
every single episode, it's a little bit like below deck. Every single episode, they're going to have a new round of guests that come into the villa. And so the guests are going to be part of the drama, but the majority of the drama is within the staff, within the crew. But the the staff that I've, you know, met on the first episode are very good looking, very diverse, very like there's, there's, they're from all over, younger, and some are old, a little bit older. Like I said, hot, 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 hot. So I think it will be, it's the makings of a good show. Let's see how long it actually holds my attention though. But I will, I'll keep you guys posted. I'm going to, you know, I bring you along on the journey. And that is the goal. Another thing I always bring you along on is talking about mental health and talking about the importance of therapy. And I want to remind you guys that this week, Daily Dose of Donna, this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Give online therapy a try at betterhelp.com slash Donna, that's D-A-N-A, and get on your way to being your best self. Um, Yesterday, we had a really tough episode. It was a very emotional um, topic episode. We talked a lot about, you know, mental health and the, you know, basically everything with his sister wives and that that awful, awful story with um, Janelle's son. And so I just thought it was a really full, like a really um, good placement of having a therapy brand sponsor the show. It's really important. There's There's a lot of anger out there. <laughs> there's a lot of anger and stress and a lot of um, pent up like wanting to take it out on other people. So I think the best use of all of that pent up energy is finding something that really gives you joy. And I don't know, if you're out there hating on people like day in and day out, does it give you joy? Maybe it does give you joy. I guess that's an interesting thing. But I would suggest for you guys and for me, myself, because I do have therapy on a weekly basis, is to make sure to find the thing that really kind of lights you up. And therapy can really help you do that. Talking to a therapist that can help you kind of figure out your life's purpose or what you should do next or career choices or hobbies or maybe love life, whatever it is. Um, Just try giving better help as you know, an option. It's entirely online and you can learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash Donna, D-A-N-A today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash Donna, D-A-N-A. Okay. You guys, huge news yesterday, not huge news, but like, you know, kind of exciting. We did get the, um, the Jersey trailer. And I have to say, I was a little bit nervous about this Jersey trailer because I thought to myself, there is no way that they can make Jersey that good knowing, you know, that Melissa and Teresa are completely on opposite ends. They're not even talking. However, however, I was very surprised while watching the episode that I thought I actually, I mean, the trailer, I actually thought it looks phenomenal. I think it looks really, really good. So let's watch the trailer together and get our uh, thoughts on it. How about that? And now that, you know, I'm very technologically savvy, I can do that. So um, did you guys watch the trailer? I'm going to pull up Queens of Bravo. It's just the first Instagram that popped up on my feed that it has the trailer. And I think it's actually really um, I think it looks really good. It starts on May 5th. We still have, what, two months? Oi. Okay, here you go. This season on The Real Housewives of New Jersey. Who's next for the ass shot? Oh. He likes a little tickly ass. Tickly ass. <laughs> Why is there a lemon on his peach video? I'm not wearing any of these. Nice and loose. You never f- can borrow any of my pants. <laughs> <laughs> milk the prostate, baby. I would like to have my prostate milk. <laughs> we are a bunch of savages. <laughs> I wouldn't trade my friends for anyone. Cheers to our friendship. I love you guys. Cheers. Cheers. I can't believe you're leaving me. Oh. Hi, Delaware. I brought my tissues. Don't cry. Going to college in three days. I'm proud of you, Gabriella. I'm going to miss you. So what's up with Paulie and Dolores? He's still married. He won't get divorced? I don't know. You have a right to know your future. Yeah. 
do you think if I get divorced, I'm just going to get down on my knee and engage you the next day? I'm going to have to rethink this. Margaret, how are you and Joe doing? Your marriage was better when Jan was alive. Are you, like, reflecting on leaving him? Everybody loves the Messler. You know, like, Stifler? Stifler. We got the Messler. I think the Messler. That's who you want to associate yourself with? Yes. I feel like I'm mourning what our friendship used to be. I don't understand what you're so upset about, Rach. Hi! How are you? Jackie Judas Goldschneider. You want to tell Teresa everything you've been doing behind her back? I'm being there friends with no whoever I want to be friends with, and I don't care. This is so comical to me right now. You have like a hard on for my husband. I don't know why. I don't have a hard on for him. It's a limp dick with your husband. <laughs> I'll be Teresa. <laughs> Honey. I want no part of it. I want no part of it. <laughs> You're the poster child for mortgage fraud. That was my husband. Thank you very much. Teresa is distraught because in the house, there is not a lot of calm. Every time I talk to her, her stomach is in knots. She's not doing great. Louis kissed her money away. When I need my money laundered, I'll call you. I want it to be better. I, oh, okay. It's not going to okay. be better. All right. I don't want to talk about it. What's going on with you and me? Just out of curiosity. Oh, yeah. That is nobody I want to be friends with. I'm not looking her way again. You're a bully, Teresa. Don't poke the f***ing bear. This is a big That's Teresa. Don't poke the f***ing bear. bear. I see your true colors. I just f***ing out at you. You're dirty. Everybody was right about you. You're a piece of All right, Danielle. We see you. You want to know why? Anyway, listen. That was a great (laughs) evening. Not so much. Okay. I actually find the trailer so interesting. For those listening on audio, make sure to go check out the trailer yourself, but you kind of probably recognize a lot of the voices. Jennifer Aiden has a lot of really good zingers in the trailer. You know, when Jennifer Aiden, I don't mind Jennifer Aiden for some weird reason, even though she, like, I find her annoying a lot in the show. I actually don't mind her um, in this trailer because she looks like she's just having fun. I like that they're doesn't seem to be issues in her marriage for this season. It's a little weird that they're projecting this issue between Margaret and her husband because I don't think that there's any actual reality about an issue there, but maybe there is. Just haven't heard anything about it. From what I know, the cast on Jersey this season have been so like forced to silence. And honestly, thank God. Because on every single episode, I mean, every single season of every single other show, I feel like we hear too much. We know too much. Everyone has a freaking outlet. Like Vanderpump Rules was Bravo's experiment with just like completely shitting the bed and having everyone talk about what was happening in the season during the season filming. So I don't think we know a lot of stuff on this upcoming Jersey season. And I'm really glad about it. In fact, I know that Which one was on Jeff Lewis? Maybe it was Dolores or Margaret. I think those are like the two main ones that do Jeff um, a few months ago. And they said like, we cannot say anything. They had a Bravo rep in the room. Like you are not able to talk about it. Um, I don't see one thing in the trailer having anything to do with Teresa and Melissa together. And I think, I mean, like fighting. And I think that that's fantastic. I think we all needed a big break from that. And maybe they were told, like, it's an ultimatum. If you talk about each other, if you guys fight with each other this season, we're pulling you. We're firing you. Like, it's in your contract. Because I think they knew the the fans were ready to jump ship. Um, The Louis-Teresa thing is interesting. There's a clip where Louis, someone says... It's Margaret's husband, uh, What? Um, not Frank. So, Joe, someone says, um, you know, Louis pissed away all of Teresa's money. And then you see Teresa crying, and then you see Louis out, like, in some sort of courtyard, and there's clearly either a producer or someone out there, and they don't think they're being filmed, and Louis's like, I don't want to talk about it. And Teresa's like, I don't want to talk about it. All I can say is this, love or hate Teresa, it doesn't matter. I really pray for Teresa that she didn't find herself another swindler. Like, I can't handle that for Teresa if she picked someone. And we've all heard the stories about Louis, so I don't think Louis is, um, you know, innocent as all. But I would like to believe that... um, Margaret X, thank you. I would like to believe that they are not going through drama. Because I think like Teresa has been talking about on online recently, like everything's fine with us. 
I just think he's a hot head. I think she's a hot head. In fact, I think most of these Jersey people are really hot headed. And so they fight, they fight like a lot. You guys may not like her. I love Jackie and Jen Fessler, uh, Jackie Goldschneider and Jen Fessler so much. I like them in person. I met them at BravoCon. They were both so sweet, so kind. I had a long conversation with Jen Fessler, like truly like enjoy her as a human being. Um, so I'm really like down to watch them. Um, Dolores, there was like a scene between Dolores and, and Polly about, you know, the fact that he's still technically married. I love Dolores. I just find her so incredibly stunning. Anyway, I do really, um, I'm really looking forward to Jersey and like, we deserve this right after some, some really kind of tough seasons of Jersey. And here's the thing about all these real housewives, not only the characters themselves or not even like just the housewives, Bravo shows, it's not the characters themselves. It's the characters, but also the seasons you got hitters and you got losers. You got winners, you got losers, you got ups and you got downs. And there are some seasons of these shows that are just unwatchable. Like the Munchausen years on Beverly Hills. I cannot like I blocked that season out, you know, the the Yolanda Munchausen with Lisa Rinna. Um, on OC, there was a season that was so bad with the with the sweet baby James, um, Noel, like blocked it out. Um, I'm trying to think on New York, what was a really bad season? Obviously, the last one with Leah McSweeney was unwatchable. So I think this is how it works. It's like an up and a down and you get good ones and you get bad ones. And some housewives that you're obsessed with one season, you won't like the next season. And for that, I will say, and this is just a disclaimer for all of you guys out there that are just so offended that I have an opinion on some of these housewives. The only reason you don't like me because of that opinion is because it differs from your opinion. And I would like to say, I'm the first to admit if I think that like maybe I'm wrong a little bit. For example, yesterday. Yesterday was on, um, yesterday was uh, the Vanderpump Rules conversation. And we talked a little bit about the after show. In the after show, Katie Maloney, who you guys know, I've been very, very openly, um, you know, transparent about the fact that I find her highly unhappy in most episodes of every single show I've ever seen of hers. Um, and oh my God, you guys are great with the comments, by the way, of the fails on Real Housewives. I'm going to have to mention some of them in a second. Anyway, so Katie made a comment yesterday in the after show that just came off like a little bit of a mean girl where she was talking really badly about Sheena and saying that Sheena is a male apologist and she's always just kind of pandering towards the male validation and this and this and that. I got so many DMs about this. So many. I got maybe hundreds of DMs about this clip and literally 50% were agreeing with me saying Katie's a mean girl. She's always unhappy. Ariana and Katie come off as mean girls. And then half of you guys were saying, look, maybe her delivery is kind of tough. Maybe she's not the nicest person, maybe whatever, but at least she's being honest about this. Sheena does have this tendency. And I had to sit with myself and think to myself, can I separate the deliverer from the delivery. And the truth is it was hard for me because immediately it's Katie. And so I immediately say, "Ugh." but the truth is she does have some validity there. I just think that she's, she's, she's kind of like a Sheena hater always has been. So it just like rubs me the wrong way a little bit, but like I was just on, um, I posted on my stories. I was just walking on my walking pad and I was watching I just turned on the TV and I saw old school Bravo. It was season five reunion of Vanderpump Rules. This is like prime VPR, right? We've got Stassi. We've got Brittany and Jax. We've got Chris and Dodie and James. We've got Ariana and Tom, like madly in love. Um, of course, Sheena and Katie and, and uh, Tom together. And everyone's got so much contouring and so much bronzer. It's like really incredibly difficult to watch. Like it was really shocking. Um, that being said, Ariana was so so, so mean to Stassi. And it's like, you remind yourself that there's seasons that some of these people are awful. And then there's seasons that some of them are great. And I just find it really interesting to go back and forth and just see like, even Katie, Katie is not, I think Katie has gotten worse and worse and more angry through the seasons. 
you would think that she started, she had tequila, Katie, and you remember that she was like drinking a lot and getting hammered and getting angry. And that was seasons one through of like two, three, whatever. And remember a lot of it was against Sheena. She got a little bit more likable halfway through the season. And then in the last um, season, it, it was too much. Like these last couple seasons have just been too much. And now that she's free of Tom Schwartz, I would love to see a happier side. I just have not seen it. I have not. I'm not sure if we're going to see it. Okay, you guys, I'm just going to mention some of your guys' housewife fails. Um, OC was worse with the hundredth housewife. Uh, ALW says, that was Andrew. ALW says where the leg was thrown, Aviva. I'm sorry. I think that's one of the best moments of housewives. I'll never forget the episode where she's like, ah, leg. Aviva. Oh, I may need to watch that again. Um, Tamara, Ray says Tamara being a Christian woman and getting baptized. Yeah, you remember that? That lasted about four minutes. DGF627 says Lucy Apple Juicy was horrendous. Yeah. Um, the witch from Anne Mar Anna Marie says, I said Anna Marie because now when I see Anne Marie, I want to say Anna Marie. Anna Marie says the witch from Beverly Hills freaked me out. Yep. Okay. So, Let's uh, let's keep it moving. I just think it's interesting to, you know, recognize when you like certain housewives and when you don't. And then just also don't be mad at the deliverer if you don't like what I'm saying. If you don't like what I'm saying, that's cool. But it's not that I'm a bad person just because I don't agree with you. It's just we have different – like that's what these shows are built on, different opinions. If we all like the same people, it would be crazy, right? We have to kind of like all like, you know, everyone. Oh, this is interesting, Michelle. Michelle is my pop culture, like, and especially with Vanderpump Rules. Now I know. Michelle knows it all. Michelle is like, you know, it's Clarissa explains it all. No, it's Michelle knows it all when it comes to VPR. She said, and it's funny that Katie called out Sheena for being focused on siding with men when she completely took Jax's side season one against Stassi. I remember that. So Stassi and Jax had this huge falling out where there was rumors about him cheating. They broke up. And both Katie and Kristen kind of took Jax's side because they were hanging out with their Toms and they would go out with Jax. That's really interesting. Thank you, Michelle. You know what? You should get a tattoo that says VPR expert. Good job. Good job. Okay, let's keep it moving. Um, we have to, we have to keep it moving to. Uh, other things because there's so much to talk about. Okay, Andy Cohen. Andy Cohen has officially fought back against notice with the Brandy Glanville story. He did not really fight back. He just immediately went on his Twitter and explained it and apologized and kind of squashed it in that way. Obviously, I don't know if there's still some sort of like court stuff that's going to maybe happen or settlement or whatever, but that's that. Now, Andy Cohen has officially fired back at Leah McSweeney's cocaine claims, which I think is genius and amazing. And he says, take it back or else. Andy Cohen is firing back at Leah McSweeney's claims about him, but one specific allegation has got him and his lawyers fired up. And that is that they're threatening a lawsuit. The Bravo honcho, what, who was, along with the network, sued by Leah McSweeney in an explosive lawsuit last week, fired off a letter to Leah through his attorneys. And they make it crystal clear that they believe her allegation of cocaine use against Andy is false and defamatory. His lawyers don't mince words, saying virtually everything she said about Cohen in the lawsuit is baseless and false. But on the cocaine claim, specifically, they write, we demand that you immediately retract and withdraw all allegations relating to Mr. Cor uh, Cohen's purported cocaine use. And if she doesn't, they're going to take her to court. Andy's legal team continues to be clear. These allegations are categorically false. Mr. Cohen never used, oh gosh, is, is this possible that it's true? Mr. Cohen never used cocaine with any cast member on any Real Housewives show or with any other Bravo employee. The absence of any reasonable basis to make such allegations is confirmed by your pleading itself. Hmm. Okay, do we believe that they have ne he's never done cocaine with any housewife? I don't personally, but also at the same time, it doesn't matter. She doesn't have proof on this. So anyone can say anything about anyone and without proof, and that's just totally not cool. It's not okay. Andy's lawyers end by saying the truth matters. As 
Dorit said last night, words have weight, Andy. Words have weight. Litigation cannot be used to create fake news and it cannot be used as a vehicle to spread false and malicious lies in furtherance of a shakedown. We demand that you issue an immediate public retraction and apologize to Mr. Cohen. Every day you fail to do so only increases the damages suffered by Mr. Cohen. Um, now, Leah's attorney, Sarah Matz, came back and said, we're not shocked that we got this this." letter, basically, Mr. Cohen, Andy, is used, accustomed to using his power in the media to scare and intimidate people like McSweeney. Um, and we do not intend to litigate this matter in the press. And if Mr. Cohen wants to address Ms. McSweeney's claims, we suggest he do so in court, not a letter for the press. Um, I, this is going to be a good, like, where is the Bravo special on this one is the question. Because this is what I want to be watching. I don't know about you guys, but I want to be watching this show, the Andy Cohen versus Liam McSweeney show, and just throw a Bethany in there too. Like, there better be, you know, cameras in that court case. We've seen Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. I want to see Leah versus uh, Andy, or I should say Andy versus Leah. I, I just, I want to see Leah coming up on the stand and saying like, well, I remember when you pulled out that cocaine, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll have to see what happens. We'll have to watch what happens. But I'm actually really glad he's firing back, mostly because I can't stand her. And then secondly, I find her to be completely out of bounds and out of base with her lawsuit. I find it like totally and completely a reach. So it's not, it's not for me. Now, this is interesting. Ray says it's not good for someone in shaky recovery to be undergoing this much stress and not to judge anything about her recovery. I have no idea, but at the same time, I, I agree. Like, you know, this can't be easy for anyone. And especially when you're dealing with in these matters, like and Leah must have known. I don't think Leah really, truly thought that she was going to come out there with this allegation and have the world's, you know, support. I think you'd have to be insane to think that the world would just be like, oh, my God, I believe you over Andy Cohen on this one. She must have known that she was going to get just like tortured online over this. But maybe not. I don't know. Okay. Um. Your guys' comments are good. Let's move it on. Let's move, moving on up to the Beverly Hills West Side. Beverly Hills, what a thrill, aired its second part of the reunion last night. We picked up right in the middle of it, basically in the middle of a conversation between um, Kyle still going with Dorit, going after Dorit, saying that Dorit was pandering to the public by going and supporting Kathy. I mean, it's so interesting that not a lot can really upset Kyle unless she feels like you're siding with someone against her. Kyle is like, she has a huge sense of humor. I don't know if you've noticed that about Kyle. She can laugh all the time. She's, she seems actually kind of like goofy and fun. I think she enjoys to have that kind of like light back and forth with friends. But if you show any sort of standing by someone that's not her, that she's maybe like a little bit on opposite sides of, it will trigger some serious, serious uh, reactions. Maybe that's another big Kathy connection. I don't know. I don't know. But she really was so hurt by Dorit for just saying the simple sentence of, I think Kathy, this is at reunion last season. I think Kathy is just saying that she wants you to and then Kyle shut her down. I don't know if you guys remember that. Kyle was like, I don't, I don't even know what you have to say, Dorit. Now, apparently that was the one and only thing that Dorit did to really piss Kyle off, which just goes to show how much Kyle expects complete and utter um, alliance to anything she says, or sh you're out. And that is not healthy. In, in like human beings, in, in certain 
there's going to be situations where people that are close to you don't necessarily agree with you and don't necessarily 100% support you with what you're doing. They may need to come in there and try to like explain to you, well, why don't you look at the other person's side? It's not trying to upset you or saying we don't love you or have your back, but it's just trying to open your eyes up maybe to something else. And I, I don't think Dorit was malicious in her intent, intent of going to, um, you know, say like, I just think Kathy is trying to, like, I think she was trying. Honestly, I don't think Dorit gets any enjoyment or any pleasure out of seeing Kyle and Kathy not being friendly. I don't. So that part is confusing. Um, especially because Dorit, has been told by Kyle over and over that she is not one of her close friends. Kyle has said this time and time again, Dorit and I are not that close. We've only gone out to lunch without cameras. You can count it on your hand. We don't spend a lot of time together. We don't work out together. We're not, she's not my go-to friend. So if this is someone that's not your bestie, why do you expect that they're going to blindly um, follow anything you say or do? You can't have it both ways. You can't say, you and I are not that close. Don't be so hurt by me not being there for you. And also, I expect you to be there for me for everything I do and say. So that part, just if you pull yourself out of it, it does feel a little bit like, you know, hypocritical on Kyle's end. That's what I think. Um, now, Leslie says Kyle only started saying Dorit isn't her close friend this season. Yeah, but they've been on the same show for years and years and years, and they live very close together. And Kyle said, name how many times you and I have gone out to lunch without cameras. I can count on one hand. I don't think they were too, like, that close, just the two of them. I think they were friendly more in groups or with their husbands. I think Mo and PK are actually very, very close. I think the two of them are... Um, yeah, I think it like, do you have those friends where you like you're only really close with the wife of of because your husbands are really close or the spouse spouse because your other significant others are really close? I don't know. I think that is kind of like the their dynamic. So it's interesting. So um so I don't know, like pick and choose. Are you guys really close or are you not? If you've only gone on one vacation together and you've only gone out to lunch under five times, it's a little, it shows that you're, you were never that close. So why should Dorit blindly be loyal towards you? Um, okay, a couple other things that happened. We had a lot of conversations about the Sutton alcoholism. Well, actually, Andy brought up the fact that Kyle was sober for a year and a half and how she feels really good about it. And she's like, I never had a problem, but it does feel really good. Now, someone, I think Andy asked Dorit at this point, do you think this was a Morgan related, Morgan Wade related incident? And Dorit answered, no, I think that it helps that she has friends that don't drink. And those of you guys that are completely sober or um really into a specific type of thing for your health. So maybe like you love to work out or you don't drink or you um, even just like only eat a certain way or whatever. It's a lifestyle. You do tend to gravitate towards people who share in that lifestyle. That's a very common and normal thing. Like even with reality TV, a lot of my girlfriends, I can't share these conversations with. So we just don't text as much through the week. But my girlfriend, shout out Valerie, who love and watch all these shows, we're texting every single day constantly about these shows, right? So it, it just, it's a different kind of dynamic. Um, Kyle said, no, I had only met Morgan one time in person when I stopped drinking. Um, I don't think it's because of Morgan. I don't think it hurt, but I don't think it's because of Morgan. Now, Sutton comes in and says, this is when you actually were reckless because you said that I was an alcoholic or you insinuated that I drank too much and that I was not eating, that I had an eating disorder. This is the part that I'm so confused with, you guys. I can't wrap my head around Kyle's... Um, I can understand that Kyle felt like Sutton was coming after her that night at the weed dinner. I do. If you go back and watch it, Kyle... Sutton was very like, what's going on with you? What's happening with you? What's happening? So I do understand that Sutton did feel a little bit like going on, going after Kyle to try to get all the information out. But I don't 
see the story that Kyle is trying to portray that Sutton is like only after Kyle. In fact, I see it the opposite. And I know so many of you guys are telling me, not right now, thank God in the comments, but so many of you guys write on my YouTube that I should just admit that I'm a Kyle, um, that I hate Kyle. I can't admit that because it's not true. I've said it a million times. I actually really have liked Kyle. I've always really liked Kyle. Kyle is the reason I watch the show primarily. It's definitely not Erica Jane or Crystal or Anna Marie or even Dorit. Like I watched the show because of Kyle and Sutton. Those are my two faves and I'm more interested in them over anyone on that show. But Kyle specifically, without Kyle on that show, it would be a hard watch for me. I'm not going to lie. I do enjoy Kyle. I like seeing her on this show. I just don't necessarily like the way she's acted in the last season. So I think we can see, like, we should be okay with this. I did get a DM the other day saying, just admit that you're a woman basher because I go after Kyle. Um, no, I can't admit that I'm a woman basher because I... I love so many women on these shows, but I think that we should look at them as like performances per season. It is not an overall thing. When I talk about Kyle, I'm not talking about when she went after her sister in the limo season one or when she, you know, um, started, you know, had issues with Lisa Van. I'm talking about right now, this season. That's what I'm dealing with. And if you're not able to look at these real housewives or these characters as, you know, people that go through so many different life experiences, then, then you might as well not even watch the show. What's the point? If you just like blindly love someone for anything and everything that they do, then it's giving little cult vibes. I think we have to just be able to like, like a little bit of all of it. Also, it's so true, Michelle. We don't watch the show to see them have a polite dinner and no one bringing up anything and then they, them just sitting around and complimenting each other's outfits. Like, everyone's so mad that Sutton asked these questions about Kyle's marriage, but, like, what else were we supposed to watch the show? Just to see Denise, like, hammered and, well, that was actually pretty good. That was a pretty, that was pretty good, actually, Denise. Um, so Kyle and Sutton are clearly at major odds during the filming of this reunion, which was in January. We know still to this day, at this point, from what we know, they're not friendly. They don't like each other, okay? Kyle has been very open about the fact that her relationship with Sutton is is kind of diminished and um, that she doesn't think Sutton is someone that we would actually like in real life. We only like her from the show. And Sutton, I think, feels the same way about Kyle. I mean, I don't know specifically because I haven't heard her talk about that specifically, but I think both of them clearly are not seeing eye to eye. Um, Kyle was really going after Sutton also about the fact that she didn't share anything in her private life on the show. And I hate to say I disagree. I disagree. I think we saw more Sutton this season than we have ever. That whole Merce storyline and her being in Barcelona and going through that conversation with um, all those people at that dinner table and talking about her being young in New York and going through it. Yes, you may not necessarily agree with it because she makes $300,000 a month in alimony, which is nutballs, but you still have to understand that like we are seeing what Sutton's availability of opening up is, which is maybe a little different than others. Now, when Kyle goes off about everything that she shared, She's listing off things that you just see naturally when you're on a show, kids' birthday parties, kids going to college. Yes, you're sharing it, but it's not like you are actually opening up and sharing your innermost. Um, but I'm not mad at Kyle for not sharing more details about her divorce. That is an incredible, um, an incredibly, incredibly difficult situation. I can't only imagine what she was going through. And she knew that if she put it on camera, it's out there for her kids to see. And I, you know, I don't know. I just don't really know. Like, it's tough. It's tough because this is really a serious issue in someone's life. Going through a divorce after 27 years with kids that watch the show and people that can take clips, like you do have to be very cautious and careful about what you put out there. But then it's, you know, it's hard. It's hard because you're on a show. You're on a show. So, um, okay. Let's think. What else happened? Oh, we had a big Garcelle and Dorit issue again. 
this is going to be unpopular because I know, I know so many love Garcelle and I have loved Garcelle through and through and Dorit drives me mad. But Garcelle is just constantly after Dorit. Like Dorit can do no right for Garcelle. She's the epitome of like a, like a flea on Garcelle's body. Like she's annoying. She's a mosquito. And Garcelle is, and I get it. Like Garcelle doesn't like Dorit. It's very obvious. She's kind of said it. But it's getting a little bit too much. Like Dorit cannot say one thing without Garcelle coming after her about it. And like, when, Gar- when Dorit said, so Andy questioned Dorit on PK and her relationship, and Dorit was really honest. She said, well, as far as we know, she was really honest, that she said after the season, you know, finished filming, we were at an all-time bad place, and he lived in a hotel with, he stayed in a hotel with George, um, boy George. And Andy was like, oh, so you, he moved out, and Dorit's like, no. He didn't move out. He was just staying somewhere else. It's semantics, Andy. And he goes, well, uh, no, Andy said it's semantics. And Dorit said, no, it's, um, it's actually not. Uh, it, it, it matters. Words have weight. And yes, I agree. But like, even just that comment, I don't know if this was editing, but then Garcelle was like, really? Words have weight? And then whenever Dorit was talking, someone asked someone a question about Dorit, oh, calling Sutton a drinker. And went after um, Dorit saying, like, did you think she had a drinking problem? And Dorit's response was, did I think she had a drinking problem? Well, no, not sure. And Garcelle says, you know, when people repeat questions, it's to stall and come up with an answer. It does bother me a little bit. It feels like why? I don't know. It's feeling a little bit like personal, like anything Dorit says and does is a problem. And Crystal clearly has a big problem with Dorit Dorit too, because they had some drama yesterday. Um, There was, well, Dorit was on Jeff Lewis. I mean, sorry, Crystal was on Jeff Lewis last week and claimed that Dorit kept the women waiting for two hours at the reunion and was doing TikToks, et cetera. And Dorit responded saying, what nonsense. Our arrivals were time-stamped in the first reunion episode. Crystal's claim that I was two hours late to set because I was doing TikToks is nothing more than another bold-faced lie out of her mouth. The entire cast and crew knew that I had an unfortunate wardrobe malfunction. The small zipper, which closes the dress, broke. I mean, even her comments are long-winded. It's a lot. Um, And then Crystal comments back and says, sorry, but nope. Those timestamps are wrong. Love you, Bravo. It's not dark at 7.30 a.m. And you don't leave the trailer at 10.30 and walk 15 steps and it's all of a sudden 11.30. And we filmed the first segment without Dorit that began that began at 11.45 because Andy was getting restless as were we. Stop the cap and just respect others' time. So there was, a, there's a little bit of drums over there. Clearly, I think it's pretty clear that we have an issue with, you know, Garcelle Sutton and Crystal are very much like the three musketeers. And I believe that the three of them are very um, strong and, and, um, and they kind of like, I think they have each other's back and I don't mind that so much, but it's giving Fox force five. It's giving like three musketeers trio. Um, Dorit just, I mean, Dorit just needs to give it up trying to be on Garcelle's, like trying to be Garcelle's friend, Garcelle's friend, I think. Now, adding to this conversation is what Garcelle had said in his, in her confessional about the robbery, Dorit's robbery. I believe, no one knows the truth. I believe that the robbery actually happened. Dorit was actually woken up. Dorit actually had a gun to her head. She actually was scared shitless. Her kids were sleeping and they actually, you know, she was highly affected by this. I don't know the why and the what and the how and all that, but I do believe for Dorit, this performance, this experience was real. It happened. So for Crystal, I'm sorry, for Garcelle to you know, deny the reality of it possibly happening because the phone left, et cetera, feels, it definitely feels a little bit like mean, right? It does feel a little bit like uh, taking away from Dorit's experience. And I don't know, they just don't like each other. And that's really it. They don't like each other. Um, Okay. Anyway, Um, let's think what else. 
Uh, let's think. Anna Marie said one sentence the entire episode. Did you notice that? They literally did not put her in the episode. It's crazy. Um, Dorit, okay, some of the comments. Dorit has racist undertones with Crystal and Garcelle. It makes everyone makes everyone wait for her. And her look is not flattering. I think you mean Emily. <laughs> she wrote fattening. Her look is not flattering. Dorit is a miss for me. I don't like Dorit that much either. Like, I'm not loving Dorit either in this. I just think, like I said, I and I love Garcelle. Like, I'm a huge Garcelle stan. But this specific instance is feeling a little bit like it's a no win. You know, Dorit can apologize to Garcelle over what she said that, uh, you know, upset Garcelle, but it's not enough. Like, when you just don't want to move on from something, I think you can just kind of... Um, you know, you just have to move on from it, right? It's an interesting conversation. Uh, let's see. Oh, Kathy, finally at the end, we see Kathy Hilton coming in looking unreal. When I tell you, when I tell you, Kathy Hilton showing up in this scene was quite possibly the most shocking thing I've ever seen. Because she comes with no makeup and she's letting cameras film her, asking her questions with her getting her makeup done. And it was giving like Edward Scissorhands. I don't even know. It was crazy looking. But she said within 30 seconds, Maurice, number one, she calls him Maurice, which is always shocking to me. Maurice is going one way. She's going one way. Kyle's not a compulsive person. She didn't decide this in three months. I bet she had been thinking probably in the last three or four years. And I shouldn't say that. Ah, I think that Kathy Hilton knows more than anyone about, you know, what's really happening. I, I guarantee you, Kathy has been fighting for the divorce of, of Kyle and Maurice for a long time. Um, this is very, very positive for Kathy and Kyle's relationship. But I agree. I don't think Kyle just started coming up with this in the last season. That's why I think, you know, it's all interesting to see. I don't think, I think, whatever. Last night we did see pictures of Mor Morgan and Kyle uh, going out here in LA at the Chateau Marmont. They were actually going, I saw it on Morgan Wade's page. They were going to a Kesha event, um, the singer Kesha, like a dinner or an event. I don't know exactly what they're celebrating. Something she says, you're free now. I don't know if that's like a record label issue or, or whatever. They looked so happy together. They were hanging out. They were laughing. They were in the car together. I've never seen Morgan laugh like that in, in front of paparazzi. Like they just seemed very happy together. And as I've said this before a million times over, I'm like not even giving a crap if Kyle wants to date a tree. At this point, date anything. Date, you know, my microphone. But it's about just like, let's be, Let's just, if you're, if you want to be honest with your audience, let's be honest with your audience. That's just the only thing, right? Okay. Um, let's see. Where else can we go with this? Um, I think that's it. I think that's it for this, uh, this episode. I mean, for this Real Housewives of Beverly Hills reunion. I think next week we will get the final. I think editing is making it look very, very clearly like Kyle is going to answer the question about Morgan Wade. Not only does Andy specifically ask her about it, but then you also see Kathy at some point saying, don't be embarrassed to Kyle. I can't imagine it comes out, but maybe it does. I hope we, I hope it does. I really hope it does. We'll see what happens. Um, okay, let's move on for the last few minutes to Love is Blind. If you have not watched the finale of Love is Blind, you may want to turn this off. Um, but I will tell you, you're not missing a lot. You're not missing a lot. Um, wait, hold on one second. Queen Hermit says, Donna, do you ignore my comments because I called out Kelly? Kelly who? Who is Kelly? What show am I even on? I don't remember Kelly. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's keep going. Love is blind. Love is blind. Oh, Kelly Dodd? No, I didn't even know you did. Oh my gosh, no, not at all. 
I don't, I'm not, I have no idea. I don't know where you're coming. I can't talk about everyone's comments because think about it. This show is an audio show too. And so think about if you're listening in the car right now, hi guys listening in the car or on your walk or washing dishes. So many of you guys do. And you're like, I'm just talking to comments the whole time. Absolutely not. I try my hardest to pull up comments that, that enter the conversation freely. That's all. Love is blind. Let's move on. Shocking, you guys. Beginning of love is blind. We start back on this conversation between Jimmy and Chelsea. And when I tell you, Chelsea's mouth, I've decided it's called trout mouth. I heard it from someone in my comments. It's like this. She's giving the sad emoji. You know, the sad face emoji, the like, um, like, you know what I'm talking about, right? And she, no offense to, um, to, uh, Chelsea, but like, she really does have a, a just like a permasad, permasad, right? Um, this is, this is, this is Chelsea's face, just like normal, right? Like, Jimmy, Chel- it's a little, it's giving a little sobbing robin. So Chelsea, it opens up, the scene opens up with, um, Jimmy and Chelsea still at this theme park. I'm also going to say something. You guys are going to kill me in the comments. I think this may be the lowest of the low I ever go. Okay. And for those of you that think I'm a mean girl, this may, this may, uh, you know, this may tickle your fancy. You ready? I believe Chelsea's pretty too. Don't get me wrong. I think Chelsea can do a little makeover, but I think Chelsea has a pretty, she has beautiful eyes. She has a, she has a, she has very pretty features, but I think she needs like a makeover. Now, here's what I think. Okay. I'm scared. I'm scared to tell you. I want you to remember what she wore to the theme park. It it was giving, oh, it was giving mom like in the 80s, but like not hot mom. Mom jeans, white tennies, but not like cute ones, like Reebok like Denise Austin style, mom jeans, and a jacket. Like, I could not understand why she would wear this kind of an outfit on a date. Like, when she ran off after Jimmy and her had the conversation, it was like, I was like, no, no, no. This may be the problem. Listen, Jimmy, so essentially they start the conversation talking about, I'm thinking they're having the best day ever. You guys, they're playing all the games. They're going on the roller coasters. They're they're cutting out ice sculptures five minutes before. They're talking about their wedding. They sit down and all of a sudden, Jimmy goes, I don't know where you stand. I don't know where you stand, Chelsea. And that's where the episode picks back up. And I'm thinking, well, obviously I know where Chelsea stands. She's obsessed with him. She wants to be with him, but she just can't control these emotions and these feelings and everything, right? And um, she ended up... (laughs) Oh my God, the comments. Oh God, I'm really going to get killed. Um, Trout Fisher here to sue Donna. Chelsea, ha- uh, oh, Steffi says, don't forget we're in Charlotte. I live here. I think Charlotte's actually really cute. AD dresses like a rock star. Okay. AD's wedding dress. Are you kidding me with that sexy thing? Um, so, okay. So anyway, she has this conversation where she's like, you know, I love you. I want this to work. I want this to happen. And Jimmy then says something. I love you to death, Chelsea. I love you to death. And I want to fight for you. And I just really want this to work, but I'm not going to the altar with you. Like, like, okay. I'm not going to the altar with you. Like, do you want Starbucks? She goes, what? And this is when Trout Mouth comes in. Heavy, heavy. What? Oh, what? I wish I had something. What do you, what do you mean? Okay. You can't go to the altar with me. She gets this whine when she's like about to cry. And it's really, you know how some people have like an ugly crying face. I think she just has like a really high pitch voice. You know how when Kyle cries, she is really like raspy. Like people get affected when they cry. She can't have the conversation. She gets very, very hurt. Because he's like, we were doing fine, but that one fight we had, and remember, this was the fight where she lost her shit on him after they had the best day ever with her with his parents, and then she lost her shit drunk about the fact that he went out for one hour with his friends to have one drink for their birthday, 
And then she threw it in his face that one of his girlfriends that she met, all these cute girls that they all partied with, is a girl that he used to sleep with. And that was it. He That was the moment that he said, I can't be with her. And the truth is, is because I think he had such a, like, alliance. He had such an alliance with this friend of his, this woman. I don't know which one it was that he used to sleep with. Do you guys know? But I think he had such a friendship with this woman that he's just friends with. And I don't know about you guys, but do you have friends that you text and and call a lot, like on the opposite sex that you used to hook up with? It's giving Fleischman, you know, the Fleischman show that I'm obsessed with. Um, There is a little bit, you know, obviously the jealousy creeped out, but then she used a thing that he told her in confidence that it wasn't even about him. He didn't care about him. He said, you, you disrespected her. He broke up with Chelsea because he felt like Chelsea disrespected his friend. I know it. Or maybe, maybe not. Maybe he just used that as a final get out of jail free card. All I can say is this. I was really surprised that he ended things right there. And it didn't even sound like he wanted to end it. He just said, I don't want to get married right now. Um, Although it's basically like he should have just said, I don't think we're working out. It was weird that he was like, I just can't marry you but I love you to death and I want this to work. That was a little strange, right? Like he was scared to say it. At the moment watching it, I felt really bad for her because she was totally blindsided with this in the middle of this gorgeous. And they didn't even eat their sandwiches. Like I was hungry watching the scene because I was thinking they're probably hungry. Like there was so much food. Anyway, he left that relationship and literally like dodged such a bullet And when I look back now, after seeing what happened later on in the episode, I believe that Jimmy is the most stand-up man in all of Love is Blind history. Guys, I really do. He was not obsessed with her looks and just like tried to fight through it and be really kind with her. He lied to everyone saying how happy he was when he looked like he was getting his left, uh, you know, um, ball cut off. He he tried so hard to be there for her when she was falling apart. He really did a stand up job. He tried his hardest, you guys. Um, Brianna, thank you for the super sticker said, I think Jimmy told her about it because he knew it would add to her insecurities and he could then use it against her. Interesting. I think he just wanted to be honest is my honest feeling. Um, But I don't personally feel like, uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't personally feel like it was um, a bad thing that he did that mean maybe, but wouldn't it be 10 times worse had they gone through the wedding and then he did it anyway, team Jimmy all the way on that one. Um, I can't wait for the reunion for them. Then, of course, we have the bachelor bachelorette parties. And I love how they just cut to this as if like no one has ever met Chelsea or Jimmy. Like the girls don't even talk about it. They literally do not mention at all anything. I'm talking Amy and AD. They literally pretend Chelsea and Jimmy never existed. Same with Clay and Johnny. And when I tell you something happened, I may need to find this while I'm doing this live stream because this was a moment that I was like, oh, my God. These kids, these guys are just so dorky. And it was when Clay was going to his, um, when Clay was going, Clay and Johnny were going to their bachelor party, which was literally the most insane thing I've ever seen because it was two people. It was really strange. And the way they walked in. Meanwhile, I want to... Um, you know, read Andy's comment. Thank you for the super sticker. Andy, Chelsea annoyed the F out of me after coming out of the pods. Perhaps the worst love is blind personality, in my opinion. Hope Jimmy and Jessica date. Agree with you, Andy, on all of that, except I don't think Jessica would ever date Jimmy. Just saying. I think Jessica's been hanging out with Harry Jowsey. And I don't know if you guys remember seeing that, but Jessica has been hanging out with Harry, Harry Jowsey, which is... um you know, too hot to handle dancing with the stars, Harry Jowsey, 10 million followers type of type of person. And, uh, you know, we'll have to see. Oh. Oh, which season is this? Oh, I'm like very, very, be- I'm trying to find. No, I don't want to download season one, episode one. I'm in season one, episode one. I'm like, what is happening? 
Okay, season six. I just need to find it for you guys because it, it will be a laughable moment. And I think we're going to enjoy it together. Um, so let's move on to these bachelor bachelorette parties. I think we can all agree that AD was pretty, uh, pretty under the influence at that bachelorette party, right? Her tongue was out from morning till night. And you guys know me. Okay. You guys know my situation on tongues out in pictures, in photos, in videos. I'm personally not into it. Like, I don't know about you guys, but I'm personally not really into a tongue out situation, a tongue out moment. AD's tongue was out. She was parting it up. She was dancing. She was going all in. She really was having a fun time. And you could tell she was like, that is my man. I am picking him. Now, meanwhile, we go over to Clay and Clay is quite the opposite. Clay is like, um, you know, no, actually, in this, in the bachelor party, he seemed pretty happy. He seemed pretty excited. He was talking so well about AD. What was interesting is he said to um, his boys, he was like, the sex is great. The chemistry is great. She's definitely my friend, best friend. We're having a great time together. I really picked well. Like, this is the part that is very confusing because obviously, as we know later, it doesn't turn out so well. Really, really funny because Steffi K said, oh, they're definitely effing. So Amy, the Amy, the one that is not getting on birth control because she's she has a condition and Johnny who's scared of a condom, which is just absolutely shocking. It's enough of a reason not to marry someone. Honestly, if my husband or my future husband was not down to wear a condom, it would be enough for me to never get married. Like what? You're scared of a condom. You can, okay. I don't want to get too graphic, but like you can tell if there's a broken condom situation, right? You guys can tell. And then you can like figure it out after, but most of the time it works out. Anyway, they've never, ever, you know, effed, apparently. And then AD, in her in, in, confidential or her um, interview or whatever, she's like, oh, that girl is spicy. They definitely effing. I thought it was actually really funny. Okay, here we are in the moment. And this I can't pull up on the screen because I don't want to deal with that right now. But this is the moment. I want you guys to pay attention to Jimmy and Clay. Not Jimmy, Johnny and Clay when they walk into their bachelorette party. And when I tell you, I thought this was quite possibly the most dorky moment I would, I would pull out of a wedding if I was marrying them. Tell me if, tell me if I'm alone. I'm sorry, what? Bachelor party, uh, 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 yeah, ba bachelor party, uh, 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 it's my bachelor party. Like, what is happening with these people? I had to rewind it and watch it again. And I was like, Clay doing it is enough, but then Jimmy doing it too. Did you notice it was like cowboys? Yeah. Oh, I'm smacking that book. Like, it was so embarrassing to watch. I was like, this is not real life. Like, they're so dorky. Also, did you notice that they got a bachelor party in the middle of a park with, like, three people? Why? Do they not have enough friends? Like, where was everyone? It was kind of crazy. Andrew says, I'm surprised they didn't yell, let's go all day, all day. Um, <laughs> Mark says, this is the way that Donna should begin every show. It's the Donna party uh, 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 with that face. If you only saw my whole body right now doing a hip shake. Okay. So anyway, finally, let's keep it moving. We get to the wedding prep. Now this is when I fast forward. Sorry guys. I just have to be honest. There's only so much time in the day when they go back and forth between clay and then AD talking to their friends, talking to their parents. I listened to moments between each and I thought it was interesting. But it's so drawn out. It's so boring. AD obviously is obsessed with Clay. She's so happy. She's got all of her family, friends, those adorable little kids. Clay, he's just like, yeah, I guess I'm here. I guess I'm here. You could tell that he was a little disconnected. You could tell that. Now, Clay's mom. This woman deserves all of the accolades. She is like a truth teller. I felt like we were watching Oprah. Like she is just so, 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 um, just so like well-spoken and 
smart and full of wisdom. I really, really enjoyed Clay's mom and her conversation later with the dad, because clearly Clay's parents kind of screwed Clay up in the head about marriage. But I think actually all of that was a ruse. I don't believe that that's why Clay eventually, after AD walks up down the aisle looking stunning hot, okay? A little too sexy, to be honest, for a wedding dress, but that is a hot dress. And did you notice when she got up there, Clay's like, you're banging, your body's banging, you're looking amazing. Like, I'm sorry, you can say to your future wife or whatever at the altar, like, you look beautiful, but you'll be like, I want to, oh, I'm buying Party's here. Hi, hey, hey, AD, AD. Um, so, so anyway, uh, sure enough, they go through the entire ceremony and AD says, I do. And Clay says, I don't. And AD's eyelashes fell off immediately upon hearing that, like all of it just went collapsed because AD was blindsided. She was like, what the fuck? What? Like she couldn't believe that he went through with it. And seriously, I couldn't believe he went through with it. What a jerk. He's like, I really think we can work on this together. I just don't think I'm ready for it. Well, okay, it's cool. You're not ready for it. That's fine. But at the same time, let's talk about the fact that like you totally led me on to believe that you were in love with me. You, you know, made me go through this entire wedding. I came up here. Anyway, long story short, they go through the wedding. They, She gets very hurt, very sad. He's holding her hands as if like, we're going to do this together, right? You're not going anywhere. No. That ain't happening. How can you be with someone after they do that to you? Like if you want to marry someone in a month or in two months or in a year and the here you are in love is blind, like you just get married. If you know that you want to marry this person, you marry. You don't know you don't want to marry this. You want to marry this person because you don't want to marry this person. It's not about a timing thing. It's because you don't want to marry the person. Then we see this crazy, crazy interview that he does standing next to like the horse barn or whatever later. AD's hysterically crying. She's so upset. Those poor young little flower girls that had to watch her cry. Like, talk about a traumatizing event for those young girls. Did anyone else think that? Here they are watching their aunt. I think it's their aunt. Get married. Like, this fairy tale wedding. They're, she's so happy. And all of a sudden, they don't understand. Like, all of a sudden, she's hysterically crying. And everyone's saying, like, F him, F him. Those poor girls. Like, they're going to be scared of weddings after this. Anyway, so Clay has this interview where all of a sudden he says, you know, there was just a lot of things I couldn't get over, like her finances. I just didn't understand her finances. Have we? Did I miss those episodes where we talked about AD's finances? Was this like a, a sticking point? I never once heard Clay talk about finances. In fact, I think AD feels like she's got her shit together, but that's just as me. Anyway, everyone was really upset. Everyone was really um, hurt by it. And then Clay went and talked to AD and AD basically was like, you used me to become a better person and I'm not doing this. And AD is going to end up, like AD is an amazing catch for anyone that wants to be with her. Someone said she should be the next Bachelorette. I don't think Netflix allows that. I think Netflix owns her, but Netflix should do their version of their own Bachelorette. It's amazing. Um, Clay is the new, what was the um, Indian dude? The one that, um, with Deep D, what was his name? I feel like Clay is the new version of him that like pretends like you're fully in it and then you're not. Um, I have to remember his name. One of you guys will remember. And then Shake. Clay is the new Shake. Shake and Clay, baby. It sounds like a chicken restaurant. Clay baked, shake baked. <laughs> Clay bake, shake, bake oven. Oh my God. Andrew says AD and Clay are still together. Someone posted them at a party on TikTok yesterday. Posted on the Facebook group immediately, Andrew. Immediately. That actually pisses me off. I am not happy about that. Anyway, um, the last couple, of course, are Johnny and Amy. I don't think, I literally think that you could have been blind, deaf, lacking any ability to smell, taste, walk, you know, talk, anything, and you would know that those two were getting married. Um, very sweet wedding. Uh, and hopefully they've had sex. Like, I really hope at some point those two have had sex. But there's really not much to say about them. I couldn't find a more boring couple. And I say that because they're happy, right? There's no big issues other than the kid thing. They're happy. The kids, the families are amazing. Like, everyone just is good. I loved her brother. 
I love the way that she takes care of her brother. And um, yeah, they're the version of, um, was it Cameron and Danielle, like season one, like that just perfect couple. I am missing all of a sudden season one, Love is Blind. Do you guys remember Amber and Barnett? And Jessica and Mark, like, how good was that season? I want to go back and watch it now. Steffi says AD is now seeming more needy and thirsty than Chelsea at this point if she stayed with that jackass. Like, if she stayed with him, she has some serious, serious, like, codependency. How can you get denied at the altar a year ago and still be with the person? Anyway. Okay, you guys. Later on Patreon, you're going to hear all about Bet It All on Blonde and some other things um, that we're going to talk about. I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your Thursday. Oh, also, if you've signed up for Patreon, just know tomorrow I'm going to do a YouTube just for the Patreon members. So if you are a Patreon member, you can join. Um, it will be like a Q&A hang just like this, but just talking everything out. And then... Um, also, I'm doing a happy hour next week for the upper tier of Patreon. And tonight is Traders Finale. I'm so excited. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Can't wait to break that down for you. Make sure to watch tonight because we're talking Traders tomorrow. Bye, y'all.